Okay guys, for this quick lesson I'm going to show you how to do a hand-built Seder plate. So to get started, because our slab roller is uh, out of use right now, I'm going to hand pull and flatten out some clay about two inches from the um, bag of clay. And all you're going to want to do is kind of whack it down and then start pulling it towards you. So you're going to let it hit the um, table and it's going to kind of catch and pull. So you'll continue to do that flipping it so that you get like a square or circular shape and then you're ready to take that over to your table. So now on some canvas so the clay doesn't stick to your table, we need to cut it to size. I'm using the bat as my template, but here you see it's not even because I didn't have a flat roller to use and I'm going to use a rolling pin and um, two yardsticks to help uh, get that smooth even. Uh, slab, but the slab, I, the rolling pin I had was too small, so I need a bigger one, which you can use with gloves. Um, do I just say that as I do? <laughs> um, over the rolling pin, you want to make sure it's touching the rolling pin and not your clay. Also, notice I look at the rolling pin and try to remove any hard pieces of clay still stuck to it because those will imprint into the clay, and I want a smooth surface. So you'll take your rolling pin and you just back and forth over the whole piece, roll it, and it's going to get to the thickness of those yardsticks that we have. And do it uh, also going the other way, just like you would roll out any bit of clay. Make sure your uh, rolling pin fits on the sticks. Keep rolling. Now you see my back doesn't move, so it's pretty flat. The next thing is to compress. So compress back and forth, up and down, side to side, get a nice and smooth surface. And then um, I'm cutting out my piece. I trace my design and then cut it with a X-Acto knife straight up and down so that I get straight edges, not beveled edges. And I also try to remove clay so that I'm not having to go through all of it at once. So take your time. You want it as circular as possible, so don't go fast. Remember, my thing is sped up. I didn't compress the other side, so now I'm gonna. I turned it over and compressed it. Now, it's such a big piece of clay, I would have lost its shape if I had done it before. So I'm compressing. When you compress, you're kind of flattening out, so you're gonna lose some of your shape. So stick your back back on and fix it up. All right, now you're gonna put it on some foam, and you're going to use a cup or anything with a round bottom. I made this piece of glass, you, anyone can use it, just wear gloves, um, and I'm going to use that to press into um, my clay so that I leave these little um, cups, essentially, and for my standard clay ingredients. So I'm gonna push them all in, I need six. I'm eyeballing it here. Um, you can, of course, draw it on a piece of paper, measure it out so that it is exact. I was not too worried about doing that on this one because it is just a quick hand built piece. Essentially, a press plate. Once you get it all set up, I use a damp sponge to clean up the edges and go through all the little cups. If you wanted to throw this piece, you could throw a plate and throw six bowls and attach them also. Um, there's so many ways you can do this. This is just a hand building one. You can get this done um, pretty quickly. Here you can see I'm rolling up the edges. This is just an aesthetic thing I want to do for my piece. It's not necessary, but I think it adds to the finished piece. I'm using um, my pointer finger on my dominant hand and then using my left hand to brace it to keep it in that circular shape because if you just tried pressing into your finger, you would just change the shape of the clay. So I do that all the way around. And it gives it a nice little lip, so if you do put anything on it, it will hold it and it won't roll off. Once you have it to where you're 
quite happy. The clay is pretty soft here. Um, clean up the edges a little bit, but not too much. It's pretty soft. It's not going to um, get to where you want it. So you're going to want to um, stick it. Now see here, I folded the sponge to kind of round out my edges. Like I would if I was throwing a pot on the wheel, I would bend my sponge into like a hot dog bun and put that over the rim of this plate that I created. And let this sit in from the fan just to sit up so that we can start adding some detail. I'm going to carve into this the um, Pesach into the plate. Um, it's Passover in Hebrew. Instead, you can, there's so many ways you can do it. You can add transfers to this. You can leave it just simple um, as is. Uh, or you can um, add to the piece as well. But here I drew out what I wanted to be in there. And now I'm tracing it lightly with my needle tool. I'll remove the paper and then it will show where I need to carve. It's hard to see, but it's just light. You don't want to press too hard because this is not too thick of clay. You don't want to go through it. So I'll then take my handy dandy lovely little tiny Scraffito loop tool and I will dig out. Or like I was saying on the one I showed in the beginning, I actually just made little snakes and added them on. Instead of subtracting, I've created an additive piece by adding the clay on top, slipping and scoring. And, um, but for this one, I want to carve into it. I have pictures of Seder plates. You can look online too for something that you like. Um, here, I took a break from the clay because it was still a little wet and I'm going to draw out my um, transfers, my underglaze transfers that I want to make on rice paper um, for the little cups. So I just write out on the rough side of my rice paper the correct uh, way it goes. And then I will flip it over and the other side is what you are going to draw on. Here I saw when I flipped it over I could barely see it so I needed to go back over it with Sharpie. And, and then now I can. Underglaze. This is just black underglaze in a fine tip uh, squeeze bottle. We have a couple in the studio. Again, you just ask and put on gloves and you can use, uh, use them. You let this sit up till it's completely dry, no shine to it, and then you can transfer it on. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to now carve into my plate with my little scraffito tool. This is just my fur. I use a lot of tools to go into this piece, but I want to get most of it carved out using my Scraffito tool. If you find you're cutting into your clay at this point and it is sticking too much, you need to let the clay sit up. If you're getting those clay burrs, you it's too wet. So um, here I use, this is actually a cuticle pushing tool. <laughs> um, it works great uh, with clay. Just continue to use different tools until I get um, what I want from a piece. So I'm continuing to cut in and flatten and remove stuff. I like um, this little guy because he's got like a flat um, beveled edge to it so I can kind of get into those tight places. And I also like um, the ball tools, those will really burnish it and really give it a nice smooth look. So here I've taken my transfer and I'm putting it where I want it to go. And I'm going to take a damp sponge and I'm going to press down. I'm not moving the sponge over it and like wiping it. I'm just pressing it down like a temporary tattoo until it is completely moistened with the sponge. Move the water from the sponge and then I'm going to compress that down with a 
rib. Now, I suggest using a red rib because it will leave marks in your piece. Um, if you use the yellow. So you just got to be careful. But the red rib works the best. I pull it up. And there we go. And with the magic of cameras, I did all of them in five seconds. So now it's all smoothing out. And again, you can stop here. You can keep removing clay. Oh, here I went back with just a really fine paintbrush and kind of filled in because I wanted it to be solid. Um, sometimes with the transfers, not all the glaze will stick. So going back with a sponge. And this is, doing the transfer this way is easier than trying to hand paint um, your lettering with just a paintbrush because um, you can make a mistake on the paper and erase it with a pencil where here you would have to wipe all of the underglaze up and hope you got it all because if not it will fire and be permanent. Here I'm just going in and like removing some of the clay. Um, I don't know, I was just experimenting. But you could get really creative and um, add a lot of fun texture. Now I'll let you know with this piece, I um, was fussing with it way too much and I broke it. So this this one you see here does not exist anymore. Um, but I did create another one and it will be on display in the studio when you guys come back to class. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You can take this as far as you want or as simple as you want. I find a more simplistic push plate, Seder plate is really fun and easy and a, probably a one, one week class. So hope you enjoyed. Bye.